Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Ebenezer. Our mission statement here is helping people find and follow Jesus. And as always, our hope, our prayer, is that you would draw closer to him today. Jesus Christ rose from the grave. Death couldn't defeat him. He sits at the hand of the right, uh, right hand of the Father. It means he's in heaven, but he's present by the Holy Spirit. And our hope is that you would connect today with him. Let me begin with an encouragement uh, for you. It's from 2 Kings uh, 6, 16 to 17. If you want to read along, please do. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes. And he looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Whatever you may be going through, if you know God through Jesus Christ, then there are more who are with you than who are against you. And so may the Lord open your eyes today to see things in a totally new way. Amen. Well, we're going to worship that God now. Not because he needs to be worshipped. He hasn't got some kind of ego or something. But he knows when we don't worship him and we don't worship God, we find ourselves worshipping things that are destructive in our lives. So we're going to worship him now.
One of the ways we tune into God, one of the ways we see him is by remembering who he is. We don't need to remind him, God knows. But when we do prayers of adoration is what we call it, when we name God for who he is, it tunes us in, it opens our eyes. Especially if you're in a room with someone else and they're saying something as well and you think, wow. We're going to take a few moments to do that now. You can simply say, you are, and you fill in the blank of how you know God through his word, through his scripture, through prayer, and through your experience of walking through life with him. Let's do that now. You are present. You are perfect. You are powerful. You are the Lord God Almighty. And there is no other. And we worship you, our God. And in the mighty name of Jesus, everybody said, Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I see nothing but the blood of Jesus for my cleansing this my plea nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fact I know nothing but the blood of Jesus sin at all, nothing but the blood of Jesus, not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus, all oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow, no other fact I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus, oh, Precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fact I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other path I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. It's by the blood of Jesus, which we can be forgiven, that Jesus' sacrifice, his death on the cross of Calvary for us, means that he died for our sin so that we don't have to. That's what the good news is. So we just want to take a moment now and confess. The Bible tells us, confess your sins to the Lord and he'll purify you, he'll, he'll make you right with him again. Let's take a moment to do that. You don't do this out loud. You can do this in your head, your heart. You pray to God. We say, search me within and show me what I need to hand over to you, how I've strayed. Father God, we come to you in confession, knowing that through the blood of Jesus, we're forgiven, we're redeemed, we're bought, we're brought home. And so we take a few moments in the stillness of the place where we are now to confess from our hearts and our minds to you, to, sh to show you how we've strayed. Not because you don't know, you know already. 
but because we need your forgiveness to make that relationship right again. We thank you, Father God, that when we confess to you our sins, you are faithful, you are just, you forgive our sin, you purify us uh, from all unrighteousness. And so we say, Holy Spirit of the living God, fill us afresh, fill us anew this day. Give us the strength that we need to live this life that you're calling us to live. And in the name of Jesus, everybody said, Amen. We're going to hand over to Errol now. She's going to bring our announcements. Good morning and welcome to worship at Ebenezer. Our Zoom meetings continue on Wednesday and Thursday evening. In the Wednesday group this week, we were looking at the hallmarks of the early church. They knew that the presence of God was available to transform men and women's lives. And they were also united in purpose. They gave so that no one was in need. And that really is the hallmark of our food larder. And we want to thank those who've given gifts and also given their time so willingly during this period. And our prayer is that men and women's lives would be transformed. Some news of the family, uh, Lauren Atwood is beginning to make a little progress and we thank God for that. And we ask you to pray for Wendy's brother Steve who is in hospital um, with the symptoms of COVID and pneumonia. And, and we just pray that God will bless the family as they go through this difficult time together. Thanks, Errol. We're going to hand over now to Glenn. He's going to bring our reading today. James 4.8 Come near to God and God will come near to you. You are sinners, so clean sin out of your lives. You are trying to follow God and the world at the same time. Make your thinking pure. Thanks, Glenn. Read the yellow with me there. Come near to God and God will come near to you. In our lives, sometimes we feel far from God. It's like we're way off track and we need to get back on track. You might be way off track at the moment in your life, or maybe you're not so far off track. But either way, in order to get back on track, it's the same thing we need to do. Come near to God, and God will come near to you. If you're with someone at the moment, turn to them and tell them that. Tell them, come near to God, and God will come near to you. Come near to God, and God will come near to you. Come near to God and God will come near to you. If you're on your own, say it to yourself. Say your name. My name is Jason. I say, Jason, come near to God and God will come near to you. Amen to that one. Today I want to look at how you come near to God by exploring how to begin your day the right way. Are you with me? People say things like, um, well, how to begin your day the right way, because if you start your day the wrong way, you find yourself, you're off track for the rest of the day. Are you with me? People say things like, well, I got off on the wrong foot, or I got out of bed on the wrong side. Do you know that if an airplane flies just one degree off course, for every 60 miles it flies, it will miss its target by one mile. Flying around the equator at one degree off will land you almost 500 miles off target. Now you might not notice one degree off during the flight, but the reality would quickly sink in when you arrived in the wrong destination. Are you with me? I don't want you to be even one degree off track in the morning, because by the afternoon you'd be way off track. So today I'm going to give you some steps. It's um, an acrostic of begin. B-E-G-I-N. Begin. How to begin the day the right way. Here's the first one. Firstly, B. I begin my day the night before. 
Read this verse with me, what the Bible says here in Isaiah 26, 9. In the night I search for you. In the morning I earnestly seek you. How many of us, if we're honest with ourselves, search for God, seek him before we go to bed? Because how we end the night before affects how we begin the following morning. If you drink a bottle of wine before you go to bed, you'll probably wake up in the morning with a bad head. Because how you end the night before affects the following morning. If you stay up all night watching Netflix or browsing the internet, you're either going to be too tired or too rushed the next morning to give any time to God. Some of us, we might have to adjust, adapt, change our nighttime activity so we can be prepared in the morning. Because we can prepare for the morning the night before. I've got a friend and before they go to bed, they fill the kettle with a cup of water. They get their mug, put coffee in it and a spoon in it, ready for the morning. Now why do they do that? It's so they can begin the day in a better way. So what is it you need to do? What do I need to do to end the day right? Well, you come close to God by reading his word, reading some of his word. That's the Bible before you go to sleep. And then you leave that Bible open so that it's there open waiting for you in the morning. First one, B, I begin my morning the night before by adjusting my nighttime habits and by reading a few verses of God's word before I go to sleep. E, I engage with God first before anything else. Read, read this, what the Bible says here with me. In the morning before the sun was up, Jesus went to a place where he could be alone. He prayed there. Mark 1, 35. The key to understanding that verse is simply that Jesus prioritized his time with God the Father away from distractions. Jesus, he knew that if he didn't engage with God first, then a load of distractions would come along which would pull him off track. A lot of us, we wake up in the morning and the first thing we do is grab our mobile phone, check our Facebook or our Instagram or the news, check our messages. And it's so easy to get sidetracked if you do that. We need to engage with God first before doing anything else. Then you'll be better prepared for when you open your social media or your messages or whatever's going to hit you first thing in the day there. Now, if you've got a Bible app on your phone or your tablet, uh, you, you're going to have the temptation to start looking at all sorts of other things. So if, you find, if you're someone and you find by having the Bible on your mobile phone in the morning, it's too distracting, then go back to the paper version of the Bible, the one that you left open maybe the night before. In other words, you go from digital to analog. And if you're new to the Bible, if you're someone who's new to the Bible or if you're someone you're not good at reading, you can, install, you can install this, it's called Our Daily Bread, and you'll find that in the App Store or the Google, Pray, Google, Google Play Store, depending on, on what phone you've got, for your phone or your tablet. And that has just a short verse and a life illustration to go with it that just takes a few minutes to read. And there's a play button there so you can push play and you can listen to it rather than reading it if that's better for you. So to get back on track... I begin my morning the night before and I engage with God first before doing anything else. G, I get guidance from God. Look what the Bible says here. Read along. Guide my steps in the ways of your word and do not let any sin control me. Psalm 119, 133. That's what you ask God at the beginning of the day. Lord, guide my steps. I don't want to come off track. Show me how you want me to live today. Now notice where guidance comes from in that verse. It tells you it comes from God's word, the Bible. So each day as you put a little bit more of the Bible into your mind, God's word begins like a seed and it grows and it flourishes to guide your steps, to keep you on track. 
To get back on track, I begin my morning the night before. I engage with God first before I do anything else. And I get guidance from God to keep me on track. I, I invite God into every situation. The Bible says this, read it with me. Remember the Lord in everything you do and he will show you the right way. Proverbs 3, 6. Has anybody come across this famous prayer? It's not in the Bible, but someone wrote it. It's a bit like a joke, but it's very serious at the same time. It goes like this. Dear Lord, so far I've done all right. I haven't gossiped. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. I'm really glad about that. But in a few moments, God, I'm going to get out of bed. And from then on, I'm going to need a lot more help. Amen. It's a classic prayer. It brings a smile, but it's so true. What does the Bible tell us? Remember the Lord in everything you do, and he will show you the right way. Whatever you face after you get out of bed, you invite the Lord into those situations, and he will keep you on track. It's as simple as just pausing, stop, and saying in your mind to God, God, help me, show me the right way. Take a breath, invite him, Lord, help me with this. This has just come up. So I begin my morning the night before. I engage with God first before I do anything else. I get guidance from God to keep me on track. And I invite him into every situation I find myself in. And finally, N, never give up seeking God. Every trick that the devil can play on you, he will play on you to try and keep you um, away from God and away from getting to God's word. Whatever happens, never give up seeking God. Look what the Bible says. Read along with me. Keep on asking and you will receive what you asked for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. Matthew 7, 7. You might feel guilty about what you got up to the night before. And you might feel bad that you've been off track for so long. You might feel angry uh, that God didn't, or you feel God didn't answer your prayers in the way you wanted. But never give up seeking God. He forgives our past when we confess it. He strengthens us when we're weak. He is the source of all life, all truth. And it's only in him we can live our lives on track, going in the right direction. These are five simple and small, small habits that will get you back on track in your life and close to God. B, I begin my day the night before. By adjusting some of my, my nighttime habits and reading a few verses of God's word before I go to sleep. Leaving the Bible open, ready for the morning. E, I engage with God first before doing anything else. So I don't get distracted. I don't get a few degrees off course. I can download the Our Daily Bread app if that will be useful to me. G, I get guidance from God. I simply pray, Lord, show me how you want me to live this day. Guide my steps. Keep me on track. I, I invite God into every situation that comes my way. Because when I get out of bed, who knows what's going to happen. I remember him in everything I do, and he'll show me the right way. And N, I never stop seeking God, no matter what. I ask, I seek I knock with my voice, my mind, and my strength. And so my brothers and sisters, may you begin your day the right way. And may you come near to God. And may you get back on track. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Jo now. She's going to lead us in prayer. Hello, everybody. It's so lovely to have this time together and share this time of prayer. So if we come together... Heavenly Father, thank you that we are able to come together and worship you and pray and feel this sense of fellowship, this sense of companionship, so that we know that we're not alone. 
so that we know that we have brothers and sisters in Christ that are with us and that you are our Heavenly Father and that you care. You know us. You, you knew us before we were born. You, you count every hair on our heads. You chose us. You created us in your image. We are precious to you. We are precious because you created us. The God who created the universe, this world, every living thing, created us in his image. And your son died for us. That was the price that was paid for us. We are of great value. And we pray that you help us to remember this when times are hard and when times are amazing. Sometimes we find it so much easier to come to you when we are struggling and broken and hurt. But we find it harder to come to you when we are happy and everything's going right in our life. So we pray that you help us find that balance. We pray that you change us, that we become more like you every day. We pray that you help us read your word. We pray that you walk with us and that we know that you are walking with us. Most of the time when we feel there's a barrier between us and you, it's not because it comes from you, it's because it comes from us. So we pray that you, you smash down that barrier between us. We give permission for you to work in us to work in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives, in our relationships, in all that we do and all that we are. We give thanks for this beautiful world. We give thanks for the people that you place around us, before us, behind us and beside us. We give thanks for our homes and we pray that those without a home have a place because you will provide. Heavenly Father, we pray for those that are sick. We pray for those that are bereaved. We pray for those that are struggling financially, emotionally, physically. We pray for your healing. We pray for your touch. We pray that you change their situations. We pray that you change their lives. We pray that people turn to you for help and we give thanks. We give thanks that all we need to do is call out to you and you are there. We lift up those that are on our hearts and in our minds to you now, Lord. We pray that you meet them at their point of need and we pray that you meet us at our point of need. And we pray that you continue to use us, your church, to help those to meet the needs of this community, of this world, in your name, in your love, that we are your ambassadors. And as we come together to say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time of prayer. God bless. Thank you, Joe. We're going to close our service now as almost like an invitation for the Lord. You know, relight that fire within me. Draw me close as I come close to you that I may be back on track.
must be more than this Spirit of God, we wait for you Fill us at you, we pray Fill us at you Let's say the grace together. Let's bless one another. If you're with somebody in a room, you can look at them and you can say this directly to them. If you're on your own, you can think about somebody and say it like a prayer towards them that God would bless them. Let's say this then. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thanks everybody. See you next week.